hearts to receive everything that you have for us today, Lord. Your word says that faith comes by the hearing, and by hearing the word of God. Today, Lord, I pray that you grow because we're going to hear your word, Lord. We pray today for a legal word, a life-changing word. But one word from you, Lord, can just kill us, can touch us, can bless us, Lord. Lord, we come with our ears wide open, and we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would just have your way. We invite you in this place today, Lord. Father God, I pray that you would reveal yourself in a mighty way to each and every one of us, Lord. That you would minister to our hearts, Lord. That, Lord, that you would just heal our bodies, Lord. That you would have your way today, Father. We dedicate this time unto you, the King of glory. And we just give you praise, and we give you glory, and we give you honor. And all of God's people says, Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. You may see you. Amen. Great job. Well, we got some... Uh, Happy resurrection day. This this is this this is the best day of our life. Amen. He risen. Amen. He risen. That means we rise. Amen. Praise God. Uh, what we're gonna do first, guys, is let's do baby dedication. Praise God. Amen. Babies at the
development church.
job. I'm all about that house. Like a war job. Um, I just want to say, first, praise God. God bless everybody. God bless God bless you guys. Everybody from out of town. God bless you guys. Uh, uh, the, Holy, the Holy Spirit wants to really touch us all today. And the Lord just wants to let us know uh, what He's done. Amen. What He's done for us. And... Uh, and, and, and what he gave us access to is, uh, is heaven. Amen? That's a, that's a pretty big gift for today, right? And all this happened today. Amen? So praise God. I'm going to pray and we're going to get into the message. Amen? Father, I come before you. Father, just thank you for this day that you've given us. Father, we're going to be glad. We're going to rejoice in it. Right. Father, this is the day that you have made. Lord God. I pray today, Lord God, to anoint my tongue, my lips. Lord God, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, Lord God. Let's go God, Father God. Quicken me to the scriptures, the verses, Lord God. Whatever you want said, Lord God, Lord God. Let them see you, Lord God, not me, Lord God. Father, I'll just mess everything up, Lord God. I pray, Holy Spirit, Lord God, bring to remembrance, Father. Whatever you want said, Lord God. In Jesus' name, Father, open our eyes, Lord God. Open our hearts, Father. Open our minds, O God, to receive, O God. And I pray for a spirit of understanding, O God, and I pray, Holy Spirit, just have your way. In Jesus' name, everybody says, Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, glory to God. Um, church, what happened today with what, what the Lord Jesus did today? It's uh, I mean, this is a this is a day to rejoice. If we only understand how important it was for Jesus to do what he did for us today. Amen. Uh, today, I'm going to be sharing about uh, the resurrection. What a day to share about. Amen. Uh, we're going to be sharing about what happened. Uh, about what, 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 did he, what did he do for his church? How much access and, and what happened to us? He's, today, he risen. You know, today, Jesus risen from the dead. And... Uh, God bless you guys. God bless everybody. If we could try to uh, get the kids, God bless you guys. We got the um, we got the babysitters and stuff. If you guys want to just double check. Uh, amen. Praise God. Anyway, we're gonna start off Ephesians two two. Am I too loud, guys? Can you guys adjust me? I hear my name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Jesus resurrection. Because of His resurrection, we got resurrected also. Because of what Jesus did. Amen. Then, so good that we See, we have to understand this. But what he did. See, if he didn't do that, we would have stood there. We all would have been there. See, each and every one. See, before I met Christ, I was I was a walking dead man. You understand? I was walking asleep like this. I was walking dead and not even knowing it. And you understand? We were walking dead. I didn't know what true peace was. I didn't know what true joy was. I didn't know what, what, what life was all about until I had my day of resurrection. Amen. Amen. And the only reason why I had my day of resurrection is because what he did today over 2,000 years ago. So what we have now is what? How many believers we have in the house? Amen. Amen. You guys know, if you're very Come on. Okay, so I'm talking to believers. Amen. Brethren. <laughs> my brothers and sisters. Praise Amen. God. So we're talking to believers today. So, can we be real about what happened? Oh, yeah. Has anybody been raised from the dead here? Spiritually speaking. Raised Amen. from the dead. Amen. 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 If you're born again, I've seen some believers. That means you've been raised from the dead. Right. Amen. Right, Amen. Uh -uh. Ephesians 2.2 2. And you be made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. You he made alive. We were dead. And you, us, me, he made us alive by what he did on the cross. Amen? Amen. And um, we have to understand, we were all dead. And we've been awakened. You understand? But there's another part, there's another level that Jesus wants to take us to. Come on. You know, he doesn't, Jesus, we, we'd be saved, we're going to go to heaven and all that, but guess what? There's another part in between us now and heaven. That's called, in between is a spiritual awakening. That's called an awakening. So what happens when we get born again? Because the resurrection, we, we, we died. Now, I'm gonna, I'll bring this around. 
We die. So because of the resurrection, now we awaken. Right? Now we need to get the spiritual awakening. You understand? And what happens when we get when we're, when we're, when we're sleeping? See, we can be saved, but still not awakened to what we are. Awaken that we are. Awaken that we're alive. We're not dead anymore. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what happens is, let me tell you what happens when you get a turn again. Church, it's like seeing for the first time. What do you do when you sleep? Sometimes we've been walking around. Does anybody feel like, like, like we've been walking around like this? With our eyes closed and not be able to see. We know something's going on. We know Jesus is here. We love Jesus, but, but, but we're not there yet. Why? Because there needs to be a spiritual awakening. Amen. Amen. We need to awake to this. Amen. Amen. And we need to understand what he did for us and uh, and be overcomers. You understand? Uh, to be uh, to be sleeping spiritually is to be unaware. Unaware. To be there's no response. Does anybody sometimes get I hear God, I read the Bible, but I, there's no response. You don't have nothing really penetrating. Right? Well, that's because we need a spiritual awakening. Right. Understand? We need to go to the next level with God. And Jesus died for this reason also. For us to get to the next level. Amen. You understand? He doesn't want David just just to be ordinary. He says, Chill. I want my I want my kids, I want my boys to have all that I got for them. Whatever I do for them, I want them to have it all. Well, the same way Jesus wants us to have the life abundantly. To the full, to the overflow. And he paid the ultimate price for it. Amen? Amen. So, uh, we need to be overcomers. We need to be overcomers. And, and the way to be overcomers is to have our resurrection made. And go to the next and to be overcomer. Amen? Amen. Uh, and we are overcomers how? Because of him. Because he overcame the world. Amen? Through him. So, uh, uh, we need to, church, we need to see the new life. Amen. We need to see the new life. We need to see the fruit of the Spirit. It's, it's time for us to enjoy the fruit of the Spirit. Are you understanding that? See, we have the Holy Spirit living in us, right? He lives in us. So the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of Him, is love, joy, peace, patience, we all know that. Now, we need to start enjoying what He did. Because some of us, we have it, but we don't enjoy it. We don't, we, we're not experiencing it because we're not present in it. To Jesus, because we can only find it there. Him, it's His fruit. Amen? Amen. So that's what we need to do. We need to walk in the newness because we've been resurrected from the dead. So we need to walk that way. We need to walk how He how He chose us, how He called us to walk, and that's in the love, that's in the joy, that's in peace. Amen. Amen. So that's where we need to go. And you, He made alive, and we're dead in trespasses. That's a that's pretty pretty serious. Pretty serious pretty powerful right so let's read this I rescued I resurrected resurrected and rescued man okay so he resurrected and then he rescued us by his resurrection he rescued us gave us allowance we all know and keep saying that he gave us now now we can be resurrected okay man so what look what it says I will ransom them from the power of the grave I will ransom them from the power of the grave. Praise God. I will redeem them from death. O oh, death, I will be your plague. O oh, grave, I will be your destruction. Pity is hidden from my eyes. Ransom. Let's go to the first word there highlighted. Ransom. This is what he did for us. Ransom means the price paid as means of deliverance to rescue from punishment for sin. And this is what he did. He paid. He paid that price. He paid that ransom. He paid it totally to the poor. He paid it to the poor. And then, call, I will redeem them. Redeem means buy back or pay off. You were bought back from death. Are you understand? I was purchased back in debt. And guess what? The price was paid. The ultimate price. The Son of God Himself. He paid the ultimate price so we can be alive. Amen. Now I want you guys to go into a little bit deeper of the scripture. So we understand that. Right? I will ransom them from the power of the grave. From what? From the power of the grave. 
I will redeem them from death. Now look what he does here. Now this is what this is what the Holy Spirit this is what he's saying. In other words, I'll ransom them, I'll buy them back, I'll purchase them, I'll pay Dalton Price. And now that I've done that, I want you to look who he's talking to here in the scripture. Oh death. Who's that? Who's he talking to? Death. I will be your plague. Now I'll be surrounding the enemy. All that cancer. <coughs> Now that I want to be your cancer will total them. I purchased them. I bought them. But guess what? Now I'm going to be dead. He's talking to death here. Man. You understand that? I will be your plague. I will be your disease. I will be your cancer. He's saying to death here. It no longer applies to the child of God anymore. Are you understanding? Then he goes and he tells them, Oh great, I will be your destruction. The destruction. He's talking to I'm afraid now. I'm going to be your destruction. So you can't destruct my children anymore. I purchased them. We have to understand, church. God, really, this is not just, a, this is really happening. This really happened. He purchased this. He got us from this. Now he's talking to death. Now look what it says. You ready for this? You ever seen a fight where there's no pity? Where somebody just keeps hitting and keeps hitting and keeps hitting. After the person is even knocked out, they keep hitting, they keep hitting. You ever seen that and you felt, you know, pity for that person? Look what he says that he's doing. Pity is hidden from my eyes. He's talking. Chi I will not go with pity. I will not have pity for on you, death. I will not have pity on you, grave, that I redeemed, that I purchased my children from. Are you understanding that? Thank you, Lord. Yeah. So now we understand what he did. The frame is set. The frame is set. So now we're going to go to the picture. See? What Jesus did here today, this is when death died. Are you guys understanding that? Wow. Amen. Death died. Death is buried now. Death, instead of us having his own, now death has got us done. You understand? So this is what happened here. Uh, so Jesus, listen, Jesus did all this, right? He did all this on the cross. He gave us, we could have a spiritual awakening. We could get to the next level. We could do all this now, right? So being Jesus did this, does any of us find ourselves trying to wake up the dead man? We need not to awake the dead man. That man is dead. That old life is gone. That old torment, that old depression, that old oppression, all that stuff, all that ugliness. Don't wake it up. Don't feed the old man anymore. That's right. Come on. We don't need to feed him anymore. We need to feed off of godly things. This is what we need to feed on, is the Word of God. Amen. This is life. You understand? So we don't need to wake him up either. We need to leave him dead. You understand? Uh, we don't need to be walking around dead anymore. Walking around depressed. Walking around bothered. If we can truly understand, we, we, we don't really understand what Jesus did. If we can truly understand what Jesus did, that would really smile on your face. You can't know the, the only way to, to know the positive, to know the good, is if you know the negative. And then you see how good it is. You understand? So we should be able to walk church in the newness, in the new life that He purchased for, in the Spirit of God, in the fruits of the Spirit. And this is what we need to be doing. Me too. I'm talking to myself. You understand? Death died. Go here. First Corinthians. We're not going to be long church. First Corinthians. Amen. Big Psalm 15, 55, 58. Oh, death. Where is your sting? Oh, haze, where is your victory? Oh, then. The way he's saying that, like he's giving them the lash out. Oh, then. Oh, then. Where is your sting? You know, there's no sting to you anymore. No. Oh, where is it? Where's your victory? Kaiti Marimos Kayani. Chiyani. 
Gee, nothing. Oh, you understand what this is? The way the way the the, the, the feeling is going here? Oh, whatever is yours. So we can tell here that God kind of got an anger problem with, with, with death, right? He's got something against death, right? Uh -uh. So look what he says. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Okay, the sting of death is sin, right? Sin. That's death. The penalty for sin is what? Come on, Jesus. Death. Death. The penalty for sin is death, right? Okay, and the strength of sin is the law, right? The law of Moses, the commandments, right? So here's what happens. We couldn't thank Jesus for grace. We couldn't follow the laws. So if we couldn't follow the laws, what happens? We broke them, we missed the mark, we couldn't do it, right? So what's the penalty? Because we couldn't do it? Yeah death, right? What's the strength of the law? So here's what happens. Jesus comes and he says, you couldn't do it. You have, there was judgment on you. Now, you couldn't do it. So here's what Jesus does. Jesus goes and says, you know what? Out of all the law, the commandments, all the commandments, here's what happened. There's some T's there, Shabbat, my child, that you couldn't cross. And there were some eyes that you missed the, the, the dot. You couldn't do it. You missed the mark. You sinned. We all did. We all fall short of the glory of God. So, here's what Jesus does. He goes, I'll take the place. And I'll make it happen. He goes, well, what if you couldn't do? I will do for you. So now that he's done it, that's now we have his grace. So now we don't... We don't, we, don't, we don't live by the law. Now we're under grace. You understand? Amen. Now, does this mean we sin and do whatever we want? Of course not. Of course not. Now we're free to serve Him. Now we're free. No condemnation is upon us now. Now there's no judgment on Him because He's already been judged in our place, the full wrath of God. Amen. 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 So we understand this now. Look what He says. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Thanks be to God who gave us victory. I mean, we should have some people right now thanking some God. Thank God in here right now. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you to God. What are you saying this God? Eternal punishment forever and ever and ever and ever. We fully understand the effect of this. Let me tell you something, church. This is where the love of God comes in. This is where the repentance comes in. This is where because you don't want to hurt him anymore. I, I don't want to say, Lord, I'm okay, I'm forgiven. I don't want to go to the Lord Christ. I know I'm forgiven. I know his blood gave me. I know all that. But guess what? I fell in love with him. And I don't want to practice sin. Yeah, I fall into it. But I don't want to practice it anymore. Right. I don't want to do it on purpose anymore. You understand? This is where this is where you fall in love with Jesus with his grace. With his grace. Like why? Undeserved favor. Ungrace with unmerited favor. We didn't deserve it. We didn't deserve it. You understand? But he thought we was to die for. Amen. Literally. Amen. Amen. So praise God. Let's keep going. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Everybody pay attention because this is a little deep. I hope you catch it. The Holy Spirit is going to throw it at you. I hope you get it. Look what he says. I want you to look at this word abounding right there. The word abounding means rich and well supplied. Rich and well supplied. So therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always rich and well supplied in the work of the Lord. You are rich and well supplied on the work He done. He supplied you with everything. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. Knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. When I first heard this, what do you mean, my, my labor, my labor, my labor, my labor? 
What is our labor? If he did everything, if he paid the full price, what is our labor? What is he saying here? You know what it is? You know what our labor is? Keep the faith. Labor, work. Amen. Because you, you're fully equipped. You've got everything you need. You're well supplied, Jim. Amen. To keep well, your faith. So work at keeping your faith. Keep your faith. Fight the good fight. Run the good race. Keep going. All the way home. Amen? Amen. That's what he means here by, by, by your labor. You understand? Amen. So keep the faith in what he's done. Death, church, has no right on you. You know, there's, there's certain death. <coughs> I'm not just talking about death. I'm talking about death, death when we die. I'm not, talk, I'm not talking about the, going to heaven. The death of joy has no right to kill your joy. The death of happiness has no right to pull back your happiness. The death, whatever, if there's love, or if there's a marriage that's not right, or if there's your peace stolen, Dead. Jesus says, it ain't dead. I resurrect. Amen. 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 Finances has the death has no right. You understand? The Bible says prosperous. Seemingly abundantly. More than you could think or even imagine. Right. You understand? So your understanding is not just the death, it is all man has no right. All that. Well, all good things come from God. Every good thing we ever receive comes from God. Everything you can, every good, every good thing, every your, your children, your babies, your everything, everything, water we drink, every good thing comes from God. Thank you, Jesus. So if you're lacking in the good stuff, Jerry. Thank you, Jesus. What does that mean? If we're lacking in it, that means you need to understand it has no right, and you need to speak to it, not about it. You need to speak to it and tell you ain't got the right here. You ain't got the right here. You got to go. My Lord, my King, resurrected from the dead. And now I'm resurrected. Amen? Amen. So, look what he says here. I am he who lives and was dead. And, not, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. A key. There's a key. He has the key to hell and to death. Do you understand that? The Dushman don't have that. The enemy don't have that. God's got the key. Right. And he locked in hell and he locked in and, and, and he locked in the death. Yet I hold the keys, he says. He's got the key. Uh, what does a key do? A key locks and a key opens. Do you understand? So he, he locked it. So what's the problem why are we not living in it? Who's the problem? Is it Jesus? Who's the problem? No, he doesn't want us to feel condemned. No, we're not doing that. He wants us to fall in love and understand that he's got, you know, you know, we're, we're searching after a spoonful of sweetness. Right? This is what we're always searching for. We come to God because we want the sweetness. Lord, just bless me with this today, bless me with that. When God says, you know you're searching for that spoon of sugar, that sweetness. When I've got 18 truckloads for you outside that you don't want to think about, if you would just look a little deeper. Come on. And if you would just let me change your mind about some things. Man. And let me show you. Oh, yeah. Come on. And you just, just, just tap in. Just go a little deeper with me so I can show you, so I can take you to the place that I paid, that my son paid for you to get to. You understand? So. We need to resurrect our minds. Come on. We need, see, see, we need to make us, our minds, understand what God did already. We need our minds to understand what we already have. This is the battlefield of the mind, right? The battlefield of the mind, the, the, the enemy, the battlefield of the mind. We want you not to believe this, but God wants you to believe it today. Amen. God wants you to believe that He set you free. And, and, and all this is for, for the taking for you. He's already got everything. Did he do it for himself? No. He's already got everything. So he wants you to fall in love with him. Because if you seek the blesser, the blessing will come. Amen. If you seek the reviver, the reviver will come. 
Sometimes, 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 I'll I do myself. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Give me this, Lord. I need this. I give my, I give a whole list of things I need. Then I don't hear Jesus sign off on it, make it happen, without even talking, without even going to the resources. Who He holds the resource, the resourcer. We don't go to the resource, we go to the resource. We need to go to the blesser. And that will automatically fall. That will automatically happen. Amen. See the kingdom of God above all else with righteous and He'll give you what? Everything. Everything. Amen. 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 So, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Resurrect our minds. Colossians 3, 1 through 3. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sits, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Look at that. Look at the next one. Set your minds on things above, not on things on the earth. That's right. For you die. And your life, there's a secret treasure right here. Life, life, look at the bottom verse. Look at the bottom verse, Jerry. Look at that. Come on, catch it, church. Come on, wake up, wake up. Jesus is talking. Listen, catch this. And when I got this, it blew me away. Where's that? Where's that? It's in the grave. Right? Where's life? Where's your life? My life is hidden in Christ. Amen. Amen. So, so picture this, life, life is in the cup, is in here. Jesus is all over. The life is here. Don't search among the dead. Don't search in the world for life. Don't, no, because life he holds, is hidden. He's got it hidden. He's got our life. Life is hidden for us. Are you understanding? And it's up to us to discover it. It's up to us to discover. See, there's a blueprint, there's a plan that we have that the Lord has for our lives already. The plot is, He's got a design, the plan is there, He has knowledge of it. And it's up to us to go discover the plan that He has already made. We don't make a new plan. We find out the plan that He has, the perfect plan that He has already made for us. And we step into that. And the only way we're going to do it is find where it's hidden. In Jesus, the Word of God, in prayer, in worship, in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So that's what, that's what we need to do. Amen? Are you guys receiving today? Amen. I won't be going for I promise. <clears throat> Where's our life hidden? Christ. Amen. Christ. Amen. If we need life, where do we go? Christ. If there's depression trying to kill us, where do we go? Christ. If there's unhappiness trying to kill us, where do we go? Where's life? Christ. Amen. It's all in Christ. It's all in Christ. See, we have to understand, this is life. God is life. He is life. He is life. God is love. God goes and He tells the disciples and, and, and He goes here and, and, and He wants to receive when we, when we, had our resurrection day like Jesus did when we accepted him the sinner's prayer when we when we did that when we did the sinner's prayer we accepted him we accepted him, we, we invited him into our heart well the Holy Spirit came and resided inside of his spirit we all know this but sometimes we need to get reminded who lives inside his ribs <laughs> we need to get reminded who's living here who's living inside of you whose power do you have access to it's him not our power See, look what it says. This is so powerful. God Almighty. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Life receive the Spirit of God. God wants to breathe a fresh breath on us today. Amen. Amen. So our, our spirit is taken. He wants to breathe a fresh breath of life on us. And when there's life, when the light comes in, if this place, if all the lights was off and it was dark in here, right? And if I, if I just go like this and put the phone on, that's a light, right? What would the darkness do? Disappear. If you put the lights on, the dark has to go. So right now we need 
put the lights on. Amen. Amen. We need to put we need to put the lights on. We need to wake up. We need a spiritual awakening. We need to get to the next level that He paid for. It's up to us to seek Him, seek Him, press Him, press Him, press Him, press Him. Those who search Him will find Him. Uh, worship Him in spirit and in truth. The Father seeks those who worship Him in spirit and truth. He seeks you instead of us seeking Him. Now it changes. He seeks us. Amen. God Almighty seeks us. He'll never leave us or forsake us. But I'm talking about that falls upon us. You understand? So, praise God. Let's go to the next. Does anybody believe in this? Amen. Does any, do we have any believers? Amen. Does anybody believe in this? Amen. Let's read this. Let's read this. So if it already happened, it's already done. We're all believers. We accept Christ, all that, right? Okay. What's the problem? Watch. Saturday evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene and Salome and Mary, the mother of Jesus, went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, over 2,000 years ago, very early in the morning, just at sunrise, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they were asking each other, check it, who will away the stone for us? Watch. From the entrance to the tomb. But as they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone was very large and had already been rolled aside. Amen. Hallelujah. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. The women were shocked, but the angel said, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus the Naz of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Amen. Can I get real today? Come on. Amen. Hold on. Come on. Okay. See? Oh, I said, there's some stones. There's some stones. Yeah, I've been awakened, but I'm, but I'm still in the heart, and I'm alive in the coffin. I'm alive in here. Let me out. I've been risen from the dead. Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. I got to get out. I got to push this stone out of the way. I got to push this stone out of the way. I got to understand what's going on. I got to get out of this box. I got to get this rock off the top of me. I need to get out. I need to get out. I need to get out. I need this healing. I need to get out of this. I need to get out of this financial burden. I need to get out of this marriage problem. I need out. I need the stone removed. I want to live. I want to live. <laughs> Who goes on the stone for us? Who's gonna roll the stone for us? Who's gonna roll the stone? Who's gonna take this away? Who's gonna get who? 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 Jesus. They looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. It's already done, church. The stone has already been removed. But we just need to get the stronghold, the wrong way of thinking to understand. The stronghold, we need to get this tear down, that wrong way of thinking that it's not done. It's already done. You already have the us. You already have the opening. The tombs are already off. You're already alive. Hallelujah. You already have the fruits of the Spirit. You already have gifts. Speak mighty powerful gifts inside of you. You have the Spirit of God. You have the blood of Jesus on you. You have the name of Jesus. You have power. You have authority. Luke 10, 19. Look, I have given you authority. You have authority, jurisdiction over all the powers of darkness. The stone is removed. They took it off. You are the Why are you still walking there? Why are you still talking about the stone that I removed? It's not there. Rise. Take the bells off. Take the bells off the heart. Take the bells off the ears. 
luck. Step out of the flesh for just a moment and get into the spirit, and you'll see who you really are. Right. That's what he's telling us. Who you are in Christ? What he paid for? What he wants you to become? That dirt, that dirt, I put a stone on it. I buried it. I buried that dead. I buried that problem you had. I buried that addiction. I buried that cancer. I buried that blood pressure. I buried that sickness. I buried that lack. I buried it. I put a stone on top of it. And why are you rising? That's right. Get your mind right to understand what Christ did. Amen. Get our minds right to understand a stronghold is a wrong way of thinking. That's what a stronghold is. And the only thing that could tear a stronghold down, a wrong way of thinking, is the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, right. Jesus, Amen. the blood. It's only Him. Hallelujah. We can't do it. That's right. He's the sanctifier. He's the redeemer. He's the one who does everything. There's nothing we can do. So all we can do is seek for Him and let Him. You get the Word of God and all of a sudden, here's what starts happening. What am I going see? Here's what starts happening. We start listening to the Word. We start reading the Word. We start pressing into God. Not just on Easter. It's not just on Easter. Here's the, here's the, here's the, here's the news, news flash. It's every day. Amen. Amen. Your Easter, your resurrection, is every day. Come on. Amen. Amen. We're not just alive on Easter. We're not just alive on Christmas. Our resurrection is every day. Every day, every day, every day. See, the word of God comes in and it tears down the strongholds. Amen. It gives you the correction. It tells the truth. See, when the truth is being told, the lies have to go. Right. The lie being sick, the lie. That's a lie that you're accepted. No, accepted, rejected. Right. Rejected. There's power of life or death in the tongue. Speak death to that death where it belongs. Right. Speak death to that sickness. To the misery. Speak death to it. And speak life on yourself and your family. Try right. Speak life on your children. Speak life into the finances. Speak right. life everywhere. Amen. Amen. You guys can see. Hallelujah. It's all required now. Amen. Um, I'm going to ask anybody if uh, I know it was a little strong today. Praise God. It was, uh, is this, there's a way that the Holy Spirit put things where we can understand. Amen. He loves us so much. He loves you so much. Don't ever forget the main thing. We can have so much knowledge and forget the main thing. You know, sometimes we need to do something. You ready for this? Church, big revelation the Holy Spirit gives you. Anthony, I need you to kind of forget everything you know. And I need you to go back to John 3, 16. Right. I need you to go back to the foundation. I need you to go back to the love. Because right. that's where it all starts, is the love of God. Amen. The love of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask anybody in here, if they want to surrender to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know something? He's looking for a lifetime commitment. Right. Okay. And this, this, I don't know, I don't know where to start. I have to touch a lot in here. I just, I don't know what happened. But the Lord, let's get some of the lives. Guys, the, the Lord wants a full-time commitment. He wants a full-time commitment. He wants, us, he wants to talk to you daily. He wants us to talk to Him daily. He wants to talk to us. He wants us to read <laughs> the manual, the love letter, daily. Is there anybody here that wants to surrender to the Lord? Amen. Maybe you're really far away from the Lord and you know what, this is your day. You might think that you can't read them, but God has other plans. Right. So realize who you are. Is there anybody who wants to come and agree with God? Does anybody want to surrender to the Lord? Does anybody just raise your hands? Right where you're at. Just to surrender to the Lord. Let's all bow our heads. You've not been a scripture, you just want to.
want to surrender, you want that rock off. You want to see the rock move. You need to see. They needed to see the rock move. Jesus said it. Jesus said it. He said it. Then they needed to see it. So this is the way. You've got to surrender and put your will down to see his will. We can't do our will and his will at the same time. No work. I'm going to ask again. Is there anybody that wants a closer relationship with God that wants to come back and just wants to surrender and say, Lord, just have your way. Raise your hands. Don't be embarrassed. Just right where you're at. Amen. A lot of hands for A lot of hands for Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all say this prayer together. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I surrender. I surrender. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. For all I sin. Wash me clean with your blood. Wash me clean with your blood. I lay down my will. I lay down my will. And I want your will to be done. I want your will to be done. Have your way. Have your way. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For dying on the cross. Dying on the cross. And raising three days later. Raising three days later. To be my Lord and Savior. To be my Lord and Savior. I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my life. I invite you into my life. Come into me now. Holy Spirit, fall upon me, work in me, and through me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Guys, I think it's very important right now that we just need to rest. It's going to be here. I think you're going to work with them. And now it's time to work with them. If you don't feel like it, it doesn't matter. I'm going to ask you to come up here and give a little worship to God. What is so kindly deserves our King. See, He sees those. Come in, if there's any rocks, any stones that you need lifted off you, come to the altar that He's here to make for you. Amen? You can't make it to the altar right where you're at. Just to make it right now and just serve the time of God. We're going to have the baptism in the future. I'm going to need a prayer for you to come up.
everybody to take their seats. And we're gonna go live tonight. We're gonna we're gonna see. I want whoever did not hide to come out here.
Did everybody see me? Yes.